Hello, today I've got another robot car. And for those of you saying, hey, where's all your flying videos? Why aren't you getting out there and doing stuff? Over there in the corner, there is no less than four models, soon to be five, ready to go. I'm just not having the weather. I need a consistently good day. And even when the forecast looks good and I charge up and then it turns into wind and rain. I'm just not having the luck right now, but they're there ready. And as far as robot cars go, you know what? There are so many about. I could make my own robot car review channel if I wanted to. I featured a bunch in the past and I've had a load of approaches from other companies, but essentially pitching the same thing. Here is a robot car. It's got a line center. It's got a um, sonic sensor for distance and that it's all the same as the other stuff so you know if i'm going to do more i want something to be different we've got something with difference it's got a little bit of usp to it aside from the fact there's a nice design there seems to be an inbuilt led in the base it's also using um mechanum wheels if you're not familiar with these these are wheels and they've got what looks like little sort of diagonal tracks on them um they don't quite work like a track tank by varying the directions of each wheel you can drive it normally like a car, rotate it, um, but also drive sideways and a variety of different things. I think when DJI launched that car, which no one hears about anymore, that also had mechanic wheels and it could drive in weird and wonderful ways. Anyway, this has come from a company called Adept, uh, who make this. In the box is this little sheet saying, going to your instructions and a whole bunch of bags and stuff. So let's crack on, let's get straight in there, see how it all works. Um, as per normal, it's got different programming interfaces and stuff and different sort of built-in things. So I'm really dying to get this together to see how the wheels work and see what we can do with it. So let's get to close up. Okay, what's in the box? As I mentioned, we have this sheet of paper, which basically says, go and download the build instructions and everything from there. If you do that, you get a big zip file and it has all the code and a bunch of PDFs and quite a lot into it and interestingly enough and i've just popped it on my uh, tablet here one of the first things it says is rather than like we're going to build this it says before assembly read the following files in tutorials folder which is one to four courses lessons one to ten so instead of this jumping in getting you to build it um and then saying okay now you might want to program it this is very keen at looking at each of the components showing you what can be done in code before you actually load the main code on and want to build the entire thing but i thought what we do first we'd, we'd unpack this we'd see what we got in there because there's some pretty interesting things um and then we'd uh, you know i want to follow the instructions so i'm going to work through the tutorials uh, and check it all out it's going to be based in micro python that's what they're teaching in because this uses a raspberry pi pico but um there is actually a packing list in that document as well. So I'll be checking everything off to make sure I've got it. But without looking at that, what we have in here, first off is this. This is the extension board that the Raspberry Pi Pico is gonna sit in. You've got things for, I think that's the, the line sensor, things to put servos in. These are the motor drivers. So all the all the bits come in from there. You've got power going in. Uh, you've got battery. This uses two 18650s, not included get your own and that obviously plugs into that this guy here as you can probably guess is the little display module um, also of course going to hook into this i don't know if this uses uh i2c or something else i have to find out servo i guess that's for moving one of the um sensors around we will see in here is a raspberry pi pico uh, so i just need to slot that in there in a bit this looks like a little wi-fi module I'm assuming that's it. It has one of those little internal uh, and PCB antennas there, so probably that's it. Looks very much like a holder for an ultrasonic uh, emitter and detector. Got a remote control, waiting for red remote control. We've got four individual motors for all the wheels. Oh, I'm not going to get that out of the packet. Loads of screws and bits and bobs. Nicely labelled though, so you know what each one is. Screwdriver, USB lead. Ultrasonic sensor, you get these in a lot of similar kits for uh, telling basically how far away from things. I think this is one of the line sensor modules. I think. I'll check it out later. Uh, I'm not I'm not looking at the packing list to check it at the moment, but I think that's what that is. I got the four Canon wheels. Let's just get one out of the packet and see how it looks. So yeah, it's basically a regular looking wheel, but with these rollers. And by pushing several ones in different directions it creates a sort of force to go different ways that's explained in one of the 
the chapters about things, but uh, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Some coupling screw screws for the <laughs> McNub wheel, as it says there, interestingly. Got some wires to put things together, a tiny screwdriver, and a tiny spanner, some aluminium plates for something or other, we'll find out later. And we've got some laser cut acrylic by the looks of it, which we just have to pop off, take the paper off, and that's what everything's going to fit in. So that is everything that we get in the kit. But before I build it, using the building instructions, I am going to go through uh, the chapters and the first 10 lessons, just seeing what it wants me to learn. I think it's quite an interesting concept, I guess because normally you'd have the code preloaded on there. Um, and then some people don't want to say, well, I don't want to overwrite the code with this. In this case, you've got nothing. You have to put some firmware on the Raspberry Pi. You have to connect it up. Then you can go through the programming examples when you've done them all, when you understand how everything works. That's when it says, okay, let's put the, the, full, the full code on, at which point you know the individual functions very well. And hopefully, you know, if you want to make any changes, you can. But let's find out. I'm going to get this mounted on and uh, see what happens. Okay, so just going into the folder with the tutorials there, um, the first few are uh, sort of pretty basic, bit of background really. The first is about the, the McCannon wheel and how it works, what the picture looks like and how it's installed and how it sort of creates torque in different directions, which is, is pretty interesting stuff. The second one is about the Raspberry Pi, the Pico that is, and it's this is just a sort of general sort of marketing sheet if you like. Thirdly, you've got the Pico expansion board. This is the thing that uh, obviously the Pico is going to plug into and it's got a good description of what all the plugs do and what we connecting to what. Uh, pretty useful stuff, the underneath as well as everything else. And finally, where it starts getting uh, interesting, we actually have to do something, is configuration of the Raspberry Pico development environment. You can see I've gone through these before I'm having to scroll up, which is firstly about putting the right code on, on the Pico. I don't know how it works when it's just uh, as is. It talks about first plugging in, holding down the boot select, plugging in, which I happen to have done already. And mine looks like this, and it says, uh, you have to bootload a V2, Raspberry Pi RP2. Yep, and you've got this index file that basically goes off to the Raspberry Pi Foundation and gives you more information there. So if we go through a, a bit more, uh, it tells you you can go off and get the uh, MicroPython UF2 file. So if we go ahead and open this and we says get started with MicroPython. So we want this UF2. All right, that's going over. Now they do actually put this on here as well, which is 2022.01.17 version 1.18. The one I just downloaded is 1.19. Well, that says unstable. Well, it's kind of interesting. We can, we can use the unstable version of 1.19 or we can use the, the 1.18 that they gave us. I might just stick with the 1.18 because it's, it's well known and definitely works. So it says copy the downloaded file into there. Okay, we can do that. So grab the file take it and dunk it there like so and I think what will happen is it's supposed to disconnect itself yeah it's gone away uh, and then we need to get funny it recommends funny which is this actually quite nice ID for programming with Python which I've already actually got so I'm just gonna check out to see if it can connect my uh, funny running and what I should be able to do with the little Pico plugged in is click on this guy and Yep, well that's just going outside the screen catcher. It says you can use MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Well, that seems to work. Right, on with the tutorials. I don't intend to spend a great deal of time of any of these. I'm just going to show you quickly what the results are and uh, what, what they're trying to sort of explain to you. But uh, yeah, let's get on with it. The first one, as always, is connecting the Pi up to the um, expansion board and the good old flashing of the LED which is pretty pretty basic LED on board value so it's got some nice little libraries in there to sort it out but let's try that now okay there's my code there's my pie mounted and if I press the button you can see 
the little LED coming on and off with the code we've done, which is just basically defining a pin and then changing it from high to low. Um, the next thing it says is plug in the power just to make sure that runs independently, which is not a bad idea. Look at that, it's running on its own. Although quite an interesting lesson there, the fact that the code had to be uploaded, it's not just there, and it has to be called main.py for order, in order for it to run automatically. So that's good. All going, I'm learning little bits about the environment. Lesson two tells us about the passive buzzer it's got. Noisy, isn't it? In lesson three, we get to plug the servo in and learn how to control that. In lesson four, we are connecting up the ultrasonic sensor and getting a range find. If I put my hand in front of it, you'll see that our range is pretty small. If I lift my hand up, it's much bigger. One thing I didn't, I didn't know much about these. I didn't know, for example, that one of these sends a wave and um, one receives it, which is, you know, learn something new every day, don't you? In lesson five, we learn about these inbuilt and very bright uh, RGB LEDs we've got at the front here. So how to control RGB, how to change its color, that sort of thing. In lesson six, we are testing out the motors, which is a pretty good way of making sure all the motors work and basically cycle through the directions. Level seven, we're testing the line tracking module. To do this, we've got a white piece of paper, a black line. I've got three uh, LED emitters, which then go back. And basically, if they detect um, a black line, or in this case, they're not able to return through my finger, they will say um, on screen about what's being detected. So if I go ahead and turn this over and just hold like one bit over the line, you see there we're, we're getting right, and if I move over a bit, I get I get all of them there, and then I just got the left one. And one interesting view from that as well is if you're not getting the results you think, these little potentiometers will change or tune how well it sees the black or not. So if, if one's not coming back and you think, well, that's weird, it's, it's down on the black line, then uh, you can switch, turn that with a screwdriver and fix it. So lesson eight is controlling or reading infrared. We've got an infrared um, receiver there. And if we press one of the buttons like this, we get things going up on the screen. Interestingly though, one of the things you have to do on MicroPython is I had to upload this library to the Pi where it sort of sits there and stays there. Part of the part of the environment, I guess, for MicroPython, it only puts there what it, what it needs to and what it wants to, hence keeping it micro. Okay, lesson nine uses the little LCD display, which is connected by I2C. A couple more libraries to install, but yeah, that looks nice and bright, easy to see. Lesson 10, not particularly exciting. It deals with getting information out of the Pi. So on this one, we're learning about the built-in modules we've got and the amount of space we've got. And then another exercise, we run the temperature command to see what it's running at, which is about 20 degrees at the moment. Now, at this point, you'd think it would go on and say, install all the code and build it, but it doesn't. We build it first, it then goes through more different bits of code before we hit the main stuff. So, well, let's build it. Yay, build time. Although I should say, just before I start, I did adjust the initial angle of the server, which goes in and runs a little program which basically centers it, which is all good. So the instructions aren't quite as detailed as you, you might find in other things. It's a, a bit of use these and connect them and it doesn't really go in I mean it does go in steps as such but not quite as well defined as others but not too hard to follow so it feels like the first thing we're doing is uh, getting the mounts on the acrylics and put them in with some screws so let's do that first and then we'll get back to step two okay which is these bits connected only thing I'd say about this is this little screwdriver isn't big enough for the M3s when I was if I get the right side when I was trying to do these up, it was just slipping. And of course you need to hold the other side with this tiny thing. If you've got baby hands, it certainly helped. But I found I needed a proper size screwdriver to get those tight. So what we're gonna do next is put the motors in place. Okay, motors are in, bit fiddly, but got there. Have to pay special attention, of course, to which shade they're facing because of the way the wheels work. Next up, we're putting this other acrylic piece on the top of it, which is going to hold, I guess, some of the sensors and things, which looks like that. There's actually a slight discrepancy in how this looks in the instructions uh, and how it actually is in reality. You'll see in the instructions there's an extra cut hole in there, but I've checked it against the part list, and the part list 
just has it like this, so I think we're okay. Anyway, the, there was a delay in putting this one together between me telling you what I was going to do and now is about two weeks, and that's because these little brass standoff things, um, we had this one here in the pack, and the idea is it takes a M3 screw, and this one looks like it's been cut for M2, so I had to contact the company and say, um, this this one is is different than the other ones. If if you look very closely under took a picture, you can see that the hole there is bigger. And they said, no problem, we'll send you out some spares. So we got some spares. I believe that's what they do for regular customers as well. Obviously, I'm reviewing it, and you always, you know, take it with a slight pinch of fault that you know they might respond a little bit quicker. But that they seem to suggest that, like, oh, no problem, we'll we'll get them straight out to you. You know, I can't blame the company. I guess they would buy these things in their thousands because they don't machine their own and um, they just got perhaps a, a duff supply of the odd one not being right. Anyway, that bit is done. So we can get on with the next step which looks like we're fitting the other larger standoffs to the frame. I'm guessing to hold the Pi and the LED and stuff like that. It looks like we're putting in one of the tracking modules. Anyway, let's get that bit built. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, just putting some standoffs in, making sure the right ones go in the right places. Next, now I read I read on too far, this is step five, is fitting the tracking module. And I had a bit of an issue here, because if you look at the parts needed, this is what we've built so far, the tracking module, some m 3 by 14s M3 nuts, yep, uh, m 3 by 8s and m 3 9 on columns, and the cable. All good, except m 3 by 8 screws, two pieces. We get that there, and if we go back up, when we install this one, we also have M3 by 8 round head screwed four pieces. Now the, the next one doesn't say specifically it's round head, but looking at the instructions and my parts here, I believe that is the case. And there's a problem there, because if we look at how many screws we get, we get M3 by 8 round head screws five pieces, and it's asking for six. However, if we go back to the instructions, and actually look at the installation diagram here, you will notice that it just talks about the M3x14s, it doesn't mention the M3x8s. So the instructions seem to be telling me, because at that point it just shares more pictures and goes on to the next part. It seems to be saying you need parts that you don't need and then doesn't tell me how to use them. So I'll be feeding that back to the manufacturer to say, hey, this is uh, some problems here. I mean, it's an online document, so it should be easy to update. But anyway, I will install the line tracker module with the M3x14s countersunk head screws. Okay, that's the line module in, without using those M8 screws. Next step again, they kind of left bits out. It's pretty obvious where it says it's the LCD installation, but in their parts they don't mention actually needing the LCD. Obviously you do need it, but uh, it's a bit weird about how they've uh, phrased this. Anyway, let's get that. It just looks like we attach it there for starters before we actually do anything, so that should be pretty easy. Which then looks like that. All done, and it looks like in the next stage we are going to put that in place along with the battery box. So that's the next bit. Now, I'm sorry if I sound whingy about the instructions, but once again, I'm, I'm unhappy with the detail here. First off, we've got three uh, M3 8mm screws. Now, you can see here they look countersunk, but it, it doesn't, it should say it there. It says it down here, but it needs to say it there as well. And with this picture, if we look at where we're connecting the screws down, again, their, their diagram, I followed it to the letter, but that means I'm putting screws through the springs to hold the battery, which is unnecessarily fiddly. Is this what they actually mean, or did they have, have they just redesigned it? More explicit detail in here about, yes, do you want me to put it in where the springs are, is really required here to make it better. Anyway, those problems aside, that is it installed, and the battery box sits behind there, not very tightly, it's just held in with these tabs there and there, then the LCD module screws down there, so that bit's done. Next up, looks like we're putting the servo in place. Okay, servo's in and I've got yet another whinge. This time it was about how they wanted you to put the servo in. Screws at the top, bolts at the bottom. It's just not possible. Your fingers need to be so small in order to try and hold in the servo. Um, hold in the nut underneath where you've got very little room. So I put them in the other way around, nuts at the top, that's much easier. Could have helped as well if they had some ideas about where you wanted to put the wires before you actually put the main thing in. But anyway, whinging over, 
it's time to put the wheels on apparently so let's do that okay that's my Canon wheels on and it's beginning to look a little bit more like a car now although a weird car these have got uh, specific left and right uh, types of wheels so you have to just make sure they're on the right one just so they can generate the right forces either side next up is the ultrasonic sensor installation which is going to drop down on the servo there so it can whiz around and decide what's uh, next to it okay that's in and if i had to say one thing about this kit i'd say fiddly getting again these tiny little screws in and getting the nuts back there is annoying now i actually went into a bit of a rant here complaining that i didn't have the right type of servo arm in the box however well looky here after i finished building everything i was putting everything away and in the bottom of the box i found this i did look for it before couldn't find it i'm not particularly worried um i've got it in very strong so i'm not going to replace that it, it just would help on the natural movement but it's very light so i'm not at all uh, concerned about using the other bit but it was all in we're putting in the main module now and i think it wants us to do the wiring we'll find out and there we go all put together got the cables all routed through hopefully got the right motor wires going into the right things uh yeah and ready to run it now of course normally you'd think okay let's start playing with it but we haven't got the code on there and we've got another six lessons of learning about this stuff so we're back to the computer now and uh, plugging in the USB and doing some more programming to uh, find out how all the features work before we actually get to the final code um, where everything's in place. So back we go. So on to lesson 11, and this is combining the infrared remotes with learning about the Mac and wheels. And you can see exactly how to generate forces in either direction, which I think is quite interesting. So we got that onto the car and it's kind of interesting about how Python works at this at this time. If you, if you look, we've got our code, but what we actually put onto the uh, Pico itself, we have a bunch of PY files, and then whatever we're doing that we want to run automatically goes on as the main.py, and that automatically runs. Occasionally, that can be tricky to actually stop and get back to the bit where you can access it, but you get there in the end. Anyway, let's go and try and drive this using the infrared. Okay, so we've got the code on it, we've got the remote, and so if we press forwards, forward and backwards, and left, and right. Seems a bit hit and miss when it picks up the remote signal. Uh, and then we've got things like turn, either way, I don't know if it's the remote control transmitter or receiver or what, but it doesn't seem to get the signal all the time. Um, it's also got diagonals, so if we go, no, that's not the one. Forward right, back right, forward left, and back left so that's certainly working and it, it tells you what it's doing so it says forwards all good and that's the gist of using the mechanic wheels which are, are pretty freaky when you see things driving sideways no the other way I want to go the other way there we go I'll have to have a look at that code see if it's the the remote code or what it's just a bit hit and miss but anyway on with the lessons now what you then had in the lessons are some quite sort of general things like obstacle avoidance using the ultrasonic sensor which you see in many things lesson 13 gets the line tracking function and you know we've we've seen that before and then lesson 14 gets follow me again this is using the ultrasonic model to decide whether to go or not go and then on lesson 15 is where you get the comprehensive functions. So this is about having all the functions in there and you get all the different little modules that you then have the main program using to use it. Now, rather than go through each one of these individually, because you know, this is a long enough video as it is, I decided to sort of skip over to the end and I didn't like the way the IR control works. So I thought I'd go right over to the very last lesson, which is using the Wi-Fi code in the little ESP8266 chip. So using this, we should be able to run it from a mobile device. Although I do note uh, that for some reason, um, they've decided not to put that app 
on any app store and only have an Android version. So iOS users, tough luck, and Android users will have to go and get a specific APK file. Why they don't have this multi-platform and why they don't have it on the app stores, I have no idea. But anyway, we should just be able to connect uh, to the Wi-Fi and drive it that way and see if it's any better. So let's do that bit next. Okay, so here's the car and here's the very basic interface, uh, A, B, C, D, and this means object avoid start, object avoid stop, line uh, follow start, line follow stop. And there's some other weird things like uh, this is forwards and that's backwards, but that's forwards and also backwards. Uh, and you've got things like obviously, you know, the left and right, and then you've got You've got forwards, diagonal, so left forwards, right forwards, but they haven't, they've decided not to go backwards and they've got nothing to rotate. So you kind of, you know, if you want to go in a certain direction, that's a bit limiting. Also, despite the fact that I ran the program to center the servo properly, if I say object avoidance, we can see that the servo is going mental and it seems to be way over one side. So let's stop that before it kills itself. I mean, it knows I'm here at least, but it's freaking out basically. And even having stopped it, it's it's still going crazy like it's gonna kill itself. And that's, that's a reboot job to, to sort that bit out. So I'll have a look at that, but I find the, the app slightly disappointing in the fact it's got things missing why can't you do a proportional movement why can't you combine movements so you could you know you could have this thing sweep around or do other sort of things so it's there it's a lot better than the infrared remote but it doesn't do everything i want it to do as opposed to the question is can you make it then do everything you want it to well i think the quick answer to the servo is that it just might be knackered i've gone ahead and I've plugged the servo into a servo tester and I've got it on neutral so it should recenter but if I give it uh, 5 volts it's doing exactly the sort of crazy things it was doing before it uh, it doesn't seem to like the signal it's getting it's just going slightly crazy and I can put it on anything I like manual automatic it's, oh, it was almost doing it then, and then it just goes crazy. It's knackered. Now, I thought I would be scuppered here because we're, we're limited by this app, and we can't do anything via Wi-Fi without a lot of coding, but the app down here has a different thing. It's called this thing called Look Right, Look Left. And if I press the regular forwards and backwards, it goes forwards backwards so it looks like they wrote a function to maybe look left and right but they decided to say hey if you press forward or look left then go forward so we can at least change that bit around okay so we recoded this slightly just to put the the look left and look right commands back in and make them turn so we can at least check that bit out okay so our recoded thing forwards backwards left right Forwards only in that direction. <laughs> and we should be able to go that way and that way. What you can't do is do multiple things at once. Which is a shame. Because that's the sort of thing you'd like to do. By holding in multiple uh, buttons you do a little bit different things, but it won't let you do that. Now the other important thing to say about Mechanum wheels is they're not totally keen on the carpet because they just can't generate that sort of pressure. They're okay sort of forwards, backwards and turning, but you ask it to go sideways, it really does struggle to produce that sort of friction it just sort of slides along really so bear that bit in mind this looks fantastic on paper the mechanon wheels the lcd in the back it's got a, a pipe pico 
something quite familiar. But I can't help being a bit disappointed. Why am I disappointed? Well, the kit didn't go together so well. Some of the instructions weren't clear. Some of the steps were fiddly. Obviously you had a duff part which I got replaced. And I've got a second duff part on the servo. Um, but I can't wait like another couple of weeks to finish this off. So I have to follow that up. And you know, if they come back and make changes, then I'll, I'll do a follow up there. I mean, I like aspects of this. I thought going through and programming it from scratch before you build things to understand stuff was good. Um, I quite like the micro Python interface. I've never really looked at it before, mostly because you have to write special firmware. But yeah, that's pretty good. It's easier to program than Arduino. It's obviously more complicated than the block stuff, but Python's a very accessible language and very easy to understand when you look at it. That'd be good. But as soon as we got onto the, the finished build and controlling it, this was a bit rubbish. I'd be pressing it, say, go left, and then I'd say, go right, and it would continue going left like it wouldn't recognize the uh, the infrared remote and when I went to the Wi-Fi control well the the app was just so limited there if they've built this special app then why don't they put everything in why don't they allow it to be moved properly what I was really after is proportional controls I was after virtual thumbsticks because I feel that the way to get the most out of these wheels is to like okay we're, we're we're going to the the right for example but what if you want to go forward as well what if you want to do sort of this sort of movement and it might be that the pico just can't handle that amount of input but yeah i'd have liked the option to see it that app was really really limited and because wi-fi was really the only way of of connecting without this this horrible thing um it seemed somewhat limited that they didn't have an example to work from from a pc if the their app was very limiting because you couldn't change the inputs you were making, you couldn't add extra functions there. So why not give us an example of some client code on the PC side of things with even like a little GUI or something so we could expand that and do more with it. So as it stands, I feel it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Certain elements of the instructions to put it together I feel could better I'll be feeding that sort of stuff back. As I mentioned, the, the, the app seemed limited. This didn't seem very good, or the code that uses it, and it was mainly down to the library, didn't seem particularly useful. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to do more with it, but I feel like I'm held back. There's, there's not much I can do. Obviously, I didn't look at the, the line follow function. I'm sure that works fine. And I couldn't look at the uh, follow me function because the servo for this is going crazy. Obviously, you know, I might just be unlucky. I got one dodgy part where I couldn't use it and I've got a dodgy servo. These these things do happen. I, I can't blame them for that necessarily. Um, but the rest of it is it, it's got promise. Right now it wouldn't be my my top of the car kit. Although I do like the way the wheels work. I think that's really cool. But as I said I feel held back by not being able to use them like I want to. It's a shame they didn't go with a Bluetooth adapter rather than Wi-Fi because of course you could use that from a mobile device and you could perhaps uh, hook it up to you know like a game controller or something and handle like twin stick remotes or something like that Anyway, this is the a deeped omnidirectional mecha wheels robotic car kit and was supplied by a deep So thanks for them and I'll be feeding back some information to them and hopefully we'll get an update uh, And some slight changes to the kit. Anyway, I hope that review has been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.